there are so many different ways that you can zoom in and out within Premiere Pro. I'll start off by showing you some of the basics and then move on to some more advanced level techniques, tips, and tricks. Let's start with the basic task of how to reposition a clip within the frame in Premiere Pro. To do this, select your clip. That should bring up your effects controls window. If you don't see that, don't panic. Just go up to window, effects controls. In your effects controls window, you have a little motion parameter and this gives you access to your position. So right here, if I click and drag, this is the X and this is the Y. And then below that, you see that we have scale. There's so many other ways that you can do this. So I'm going to reset my parameters, double click on the clip, and click and drag the clip to move it around the frame. If you want a better view of this, just go down to the bottom left of your program monitor to select zoom level and zoom out to whatever you need to. And now I can click and drag on the outside of the clip. And if you accidentally click off the clip, you notice that if I click and drag, I can't move the clip anywhere. In order to get back to this, you could double click on the clip, but you could also have the option of clicking on the word motion and that will bring up these handles as well. Now that you got the fundamentals of positioning, let's take this a step further into some real world examples. On the timeline, I have these four clips of these windsurfers just gnarling out on these waves. Like, check this out. Bam! What we wanna do with these clips is remove the top and bottom black bars. And instead of doing it manually for every single clip, what I wanna do is just scale in on one clip and then copy those attributes to the rest of the clips. I'm gonna select this first clip and scale in until I get rid of the black bars. It seems to be 107 is the magic number for this one. All I'm gonna do is right click on that clip and go to copy. You could also just hit command or control C. Then I'm gonna highlight my other clips, right click and go to paste attributes. In the paste attributes window, we wanna make sure that motion underneath video attributes is selected. This will paste the attributes of the clip that you have copied in the clipboard to the rest of the clips. So when I hit OK, we now have a scale of 107 on each of these clips, effectively getting rid of the black bars on all of these clips with a click of a button. Another quick tip I wanna add in here is just set to frame size. So this happens when you pull your footage onto the timeline and let's say your original footage isn't the same size as your sequence settings. So what I would do in most situations is highlight all your footage, right click and go to set to frame size, and that will scale it up to the dimensions that it needs to be. I've already created a full video explaining set to frame size versus scale to frame size. If you wanna check it out, I'll link it in my description. Now let's move on to a simple punch in and punch out to help disguise your jump cuts. In order to make a jump cut, I'm going to hit add edit on this clip move my playhead forward and then ripple trim to previous edit. I'll move the playhead forward a little bit more and right here is where I wanna punch back out. So I'll hit add edit one more time. And this middle clip, which I'll label mango, just so you can see, is where we want to punch in. So I'll go to the effects controls, scale in a bit, and the end result is this. It punches in and then punches back out. Doesn't look too bad, but I think we can make the framing look so much smoother. And to show you what I mean, let's move on to my second example where I'm over here. Look at the framing of my face when it punches in. It's not bad again, but the overall outline of where my head is on the frame is different from the frame before. To make this look smoother, I wanna maintain the same eye line, headroom, and overall head space. I wanna go over to my button editor at the bottom right of the program monitor and drag on my rulers and my guides. So I'll click show rulers and then I'll click show guides. What I like to do is just click and drag from the top ruler and that will bring on a guide and create a guide for my eye line. Now, if I move over, I can clearly see the difference of where my eye line is. Another thing that could help in some circumstances like this one is creating more guides. So I'll click and drag from the side and put that down like this. So now I have a guide to how much headroom there is, where my eye line is, and the overall outline of where my head is in the original frame. Now I go to my punched in framing and just click and drag my face so it matches that of the previous clip. If I turn off my rulers and guides, we now have a framing like this which I think is so much smoother. Now that I've shown you the fundamentals of how to punch in and punch out on your shots, let me reveal the number one secret when it comes to editing talking head videos on YouTube. It's not really that big of a secret at all, it's just a tip to help you save time. And that is to treat your one camera angle as if it were many in a multi-camera sequence. This first track is 
punched in if I unenable this. Underneath that is the full scaled out view. Now, if I were doing something like a tutorial, if you were playing a gaming video or anything like that, the next view is the screen recording with me up in the corner. And lastly, I have me punched in on the screen recording. So effectively, I've now turned my one camera angle and my screen recording into four separate camera angles. And the beauty of this is if I highlight all of these tracks, right click and go to nest, I'll call this multicam, hit OK. I'll right click on that nested sequence and go to multi-camera, enable. The next step is to go to the wrench in the bottom right of your program monitor and turn on multi-camera. So now we have a multi-camera view of that nested sequence. And all I have to do when I'm playing back on this clip is use my numbers as it's playing back and I'm creating these edits like it were a live multi-cam sequence. You can see down here below that it recorded my edits. So if you edit a video like this structure on YouTube, duplicate those tracks, set up some different frames, turn it into a multi-camera sequence, and then have at it. So we've covered a lot when it comes to punching in and punching out, but let's say you want to animate or keyframe in a scale in or scale out. On the timeline, I got this vehicle just completely shredding it through this sand, and let's say we want to zoom in on the tire. I'm gonna move my playhead to where I want to start the zoom in, and then go to my effects controls, and click the stopwatch on position and on scale. That will create two keyframes. I'll move my playhead forward a little bit, and then I will scale in. The moment I change any of these parameters, it will automatically create a keyframe. So right now we have something that looks like this. And then I will add two more keyframes. I'll move a little bit further, and then I'll hit reset parameter to zoom out. Overall, it looks like this. Zoop. Look at the tire. Zoop back to full screen. Let's say we want to make this look better than just a linear motion from point A to point B. In order to see what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit the little down arrow on position and scale, highlight all of my keyframes, right click, go to temporal interpolation, ease in. You can see how it's curving our velocity right now. And then I'll right click, go to temporal interpolation, ease out. And now we have an exponential curve on both the position and scale and it kind of eases in and out of the two placements as opposed to that linear. Personally, I think that's a lot of clicking, so I would assign a keyboard shortcut to that. Option Command K to bring up your shortcuts menu. In the search bar, look up Ease Temp, and that will bring up your keyframe temporal interpolation ease in and out. Click right here. Now you can hit any keyboard combination that you want to set it to. So for me, I'm just gonna do Shift comma, and the one below it, I'll do shift period. So that's set up my ease in and ease out. I'll hit okay. And if I highlight all of these again, I'll hit shift comma and shift period. So much faster to ease in and out those keyframes. Now, depending on your situation, there are several alternatives of how you animate the zoom in and zoom out inside Premiere Pro. The first alternative is anchor point. Instead of toggling on both position and scale, I'm just going to toggle my scale on. I'll move the playhead a little bit. I'm going to click on motion and that will bring up the crosshair in the middle of the clip. If I click and hold the crosshair, this icon means that I'm now moving the anchor point of the clip. If I move this down by the tire and go down to the scale and zoom in, Premiere Pro will zoom in on that anchor point. I go a little bit further like we did before, create my keyframe, go back and hit reset parameter, ease ins and ease outs. And now we have a similar animation to before, but instead of keyframing my position, I've moved my anchor point and animated my scale around that. Another alternative way to do this is if you want to add motion blur to the movement in and out. Go to your effects window and search for transform, drag that onto your clip and go to the effects controls for the clip. Now the transform effect looks exactly like the motion effect with the exception of this item down here called shutter angle. So I've applied the position and scale animations like we did before, except it's on the transform effect and not the motion effect. And if I go over here in the middle of the animation, watch what happens if I turn off composition shutter angle and start raising this number. You can see the motion blur that's appearing on the edges of the frame. And that's how you would effectively add motion blur 
to this zoom. You can take this all the way up to 360 for extreme amounts of motion blur, but I think anything from 120 to 180 looks the most natural. If you find yourself animating a bunch of zooms in your content all the time, let me show you some tools that can make this process faster and easier for you in the long run. The first one being Camille Pecola's Dragon Zoom Pro. This is an extension that you can get for Premiere Pro. I'll have a link to it in the description below. It allows you to click and drag on an area of your monitor and it will automatically set up the keyframes to zoom in and out of that area. To show you an example of how you could use it, after you've installed it correctly, you would go up to Window, Extensions, and click on Drag Zoom Pro. This brings it up as a bin inside Premiere Pro, and by default, the transition duration is one second. For this though, I wanna do 0.5 seconds or half a second. I've set my playhead where I want the zoom in to start, and then I'll hit refresh right here to create a thumbnail that I can drag and zoom on. What this does is create a transform effect on the clip, and it will toggle on the animation for position, scale, and rotation. It also creates a shutter angle of 180 degrees. You can change that in the settings over here, but for right now, I'm gonna leave it at 180. Now that we have this thumbnail, all I need to do is click and drag with my mouse. Now, we have a couple more things that I can do. I can hold space to move my area. I can hold shift to create a rotation. For right now, I'm gonna kind of set up my area like this. And the moment I let go of the mouse, it automatically creates those keyframes on the clip. Here's what it looks like. Pretty cool, right? So in order to zoom back out from this, I can go back to the Drag Zoom Pro and all I have to do is click Zoom Out to 100%. Now I could set this to a different duration, but I'm gonna keep it the same. And again, it automatically creates those keyframes on the clip. Camille Pecola, amazing job on making a functional plugin for Premiere Pro for scaling. And for those of you that are serious at your editing, you may want to think about getting an external controller for Premiere Pro. This one's the monogram. It's a little bit more on the expensive side, but it does work well with Premiere Pro. I've already done a full video on this piece of gear, so I won't dive too much into it. But what I have done is set up this knob for my scale, this knob for my position, and this one for my Y. And I also have a jog wheel so I can move the playhead. I'll toggle on the scale and position. I'll move my playhead a little bit, scale in, and move my knobs to the right position. And one thing I wish I could do is just add remove keyframe from one of these buttons. I haven't figured that out yet, but I'm sure that is an option. If it is, let me know in the comments. So then I will move my jog wheel a little bit more, and then I will just press my X and my Y back to the reset positions and do the same thing as before. So now we get something like this. Zooms in on him going towards it and then zooms back out. So that's the monogram. If you're curious about it, I'll have a link to it in the description below. Other methods of zooming in and out that I did not cover in this video are things like the basic 3D effect, as well as if you just want to zoom in on a specific part of your video using something like a crop or a mask. If you're interested in those, I have links to it on the screen. If this video was helpful, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And until next time, my name's Javier Mercedes, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.